Let's talk about the past. Our phones are actually miniature pocket-sized time machines. They're amazing devices and they can show us almost anything we want and they can do almost anything. And anything they can't do, anything they can't show us, they can, by proxy and by connection to other computers, accomplish mostly anything. I don't have unlimited storage or unlimited computing power on my phone, but it can connect to computers that do, or a series of computers that do. So, let's back up a little bit. And if I'm talking about our phones being time machines, well, reasonably we can only move one direction in time normally forward by existing moment to moment in the present. We can't move into the future any faster than one second per second, unfortunately, yet. But with our phones, we can move into the past. But what is the past? I mean, it's clearly not now. It's not the future. It's already happened. Maybe it's easiest to define the past by thinking of what it's not. It's not concrete. You can't touch it, feel it, measure it, weigh it. You can't have it. It certainly isn't valuable. You can't own the past. You can't have it or quantify it in any sort of way. It's not collective, but it's also not personal. We can have collective memories of events, such as Beyonce's Lemonade coming out, but we have personal memories that can't be shared collectively with our feelings related to these things. I can remember the first time I was sitting in a bar and heard Lemonade and saw it on screen and how moving that was for me and just how powerful it is. And while many other people might have felt the same way, they don't share the same memory. We don't have the exact same past. So it's personal, but it's not. It all happened around the same time for everyone. Time isn't available to us. It certainly isn't something that I can call upon or show to anyone as a lot of it is so subjective. So what do our phones tell us about the past then? You might find articles or videos that were produced, written, recorded, and saved days ago, hours ago, weeks ago, months ago, years ago. I can look up ancient Renaissance art that certainly isn't present. My looking at it is present, but the thing existed in the past, but it may exist now too. So when does something make the transition from present to past? This makes me think of past me. Past me is the one responsible for groceries and sleeping and taking showers. I don't do those things now, but I did do them so that future me can do other things. Future me likes smelling good. Future me likes having food in his stomach. But it's up to past me to do that. We think about the sense of cultural immediacy now and how it might affect us in the future, but nothing that we use for that cultural immediacy is actually happening now and we're looking at it in the past. What does that really mean? Does it mean anything? Is this the way we've always viewed time? Is it just now that we have the ability to more readily call on it? That in the past, things that had happened before, epic poetry and battles were told by mouth. In fact, there were a great number of people who believed that this was the truest way to tell things was orally, that writing it down was a shortcut and would cheat the memory. But that argument went the way with writing and now writing is going the way with the immediacy of phones. So I wonder, maybe if phones aren't time travel machines, 
Maybe if instead they're gateways, passages. Imagine if the time continuum were a curtain and they just allowed us to peek just a little bit inside. Well, even still, I can look at my Facebook memories on my phone and I can see that these are things that I remember. I may remember physical sensations from them, smells, touches, ways I was feeling. I have emotional memories. But what does that leave me and the present? If I feel the same thing today that I felt a year ago, am I experiencing the same thing? Is it something more basic than that? Maybe it's not as complicated. Maybe it's simply that there are only so many emotions and memories on which to draw. And anytime I have a memory of something, maybe it's not even the actual past that I'm thinking about. Maybe it's just a sampling of part of a selection that I can draw from. I like to think that as our culture moves forward and grows more accustomed to phones and the way the internet is working now, that there will be more acknowledgement of the past. So maybe we'll see a focus on what has happened, not what is happening. Allow ourselves maybe a little time to unpack the details of the past. Use our phones less as windows to the world and more as magnifying glasses so we can comb through the details. Maybe last night whenever I started thinking about this idea, when past me was thinking about past him, maybe I deluded myself into thinking that there was more there than there is, but maybe there is more now than there was. You won't see this live. You'll see this in the future of a past me. I'll be different then by the time you see it, and by the time you finish watching the video, you'll be different than you were when you started it. Do you see your phone as a time traveling machine? Do you think that by the time you find something you like and have the time to share it with someone that you'll still like it the way you did when you first found it? Let me know what you think, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.